All right. Well, for those of you watching this in the future on YouTube, I initially do these coffee chats as a Facebook Live. So sometimes there's a long pause in the, in the beginning while I wait for people to jump on live. But I'm going to get started. Oh, here we go. Good morning. Hi, guys. I wonder if I can see... Con oh, I can see. Good morning, Mom. I can see who's watching. Hey, I can see comments. Yes. How does it get better than that? Good morning. All right. For those of you who you're just catching this coffee chat for the first time ever and you have no idea who I am, my name is Catherine Oster and I am a certified facilitator with Access Consciousness. I live near a small town called St. Walberg, Saskatchewan, Canada. And these coffee chats are just me chatting with you about the tools of Access Consciousness and how I live them basically every single day now. Um, so this morning I wanted to talk to you guys about choice. Did you know you actually have a choice? This wasn't something that I knew about, um, at least to the degree that I know now, until I started hearing different conversations about what choice is and that you actually, that you always have a choice. In the beginning, I couldn't ever see that. Um, in the beginning, I would, I thought I had to choose certain things because that's what people said I had to choose. And what if that's not the case? And then actually, then you get to this point where you don't even know what to choose because you can see I have a choice. I can choose to do this or I can choose not to do that. Like, you know, you're only giving yourself like um, to do it or to not do it. But what if there's another choice there that you haven't acknowledged yet? And um, anyway, so for me, I just made the choice to homeschool my kids. And that's actually, if you would have talked to me a week ago, that wasn't a choice that I was choosing, actually. Um, it wasn't even, I was like, no, they're going to school. It's fine. They they're can go and see their friends and, and it's all good. They're going to school. Now, the other really cool thing that you learn about with, in, that I learned about taking these classes is you have a new choice in every single 10 seconds. <laughs> So in this 10 seconds, you have this choice. And in this 10 seconds, you have another choice. You can always, you always have to keep choosing. And in fact, that is how you create your life is by continuously choosing. I choose way more now than I used to choose. I used to like, I was on autopilot a lot. I would maybe make, I'm just going to say, I would make like one choice a day. And that was good. Literally now I, I do choose in every 10 seconds. Like I'm always actively engaging with the present moment, choosing what is required of me. Um, so yeah, so, but today we're homeschooling. I actually have no idea what I'm doing right now. <laughs> That's the other thing is like, you don't actually know the possibilities available to you until you make a choice. And my choice to homeschool my kids is because that's actually something that just works for me right now. Um, yeah, so the, the school division that we're in a couple days before school started. So the school started yesterday and on Tuesday afternoon, we got an email saying that masks were mandatory again in elementary grades. And but the kids only had to wear them. Hey, Lori, when they were not at their desk. If they were at their desk, they could take their mask off. Um, that just didn't work for me. And I, I'm not going to tell you why my reasons, and I don't actually have any reasons and justifications. I just actually know there was an energy there for me that that just didn't work. No. And the kids didn't want to, they didn't want to wear masks in school like that. And I wasn't, I wasn't going to force them to do something they didn't want to do. And I agreed with it. It didn't sit right with me. And so, um, so we're homeschooling. There was another choice available. Now, when I made the choice, 
and your choice might not be the popular choice, are you still willing to choose it? It takes a little bit of courage to choose when you're the only one or a small percentage of people choosing that. Are you willing to know like what works for you without a doubt and have your own back no matter what? Now, I also really actually know that being a farmer (laughs) kind of cultivates this courage (laughs) because every single year we don't actually know if we're going to harvest a crop or what kind of crop we're going to harvest. And we literally risk millions of dollars every single year, not knowing if we are going to, if we're going to get it back. Now, there's never any guarantees. And this year is also an example of that where it was really, really dry. Um, And so our crop is like, for sure it's half, maybe even less than half of what it had been in previous years. Um, And now it's raining. (laughs) Now it's raining as we're trying to harvest, which really doesn't make that any easier. So I've actually learned to be comfortable with a certain level of risk. I've also been actively choosing not popular choices for other, you know, like building an indoor riding arena. I mean, that's taking a lot of risk as well. Um, Starting, you know, leaving the workforce, leaving my paid employment to go off and create, yeah, farming is always a gamble, Lori. Leaving my paid job, my salary job as an agronomist, um, like 11 years ago, that was a huge risk to pursue riding lessons to being a coach and training horses. I remember Travis, my husband was like, nobody is going to pay you to teach them how to ride a horse. And, and I could have believed him. I could have believed him. And I could have said, you know what, you're right. I guess I will just keep working at this job that was not fun for me anymore. But I said, you know what, I'm going to prove you wrong. And I am going to do it quit the job, started the riding lessons and the horse training. And then that led me down a trail. And, um, so I'm, so that's the thing with choice is you don't actually know what the next step is or what, what possibilities open up to you once you choose until you actually choose. Right. Um, and I get it. Um, I know that there's not a lot of parents happy with the mask mandating in the schools, and the way that their life is set up right now, it's, it's a harder choice for them to make because they do have jobs and they do have to support their families. Um, and it gets uncomfortable when you don't really know. <laughs> Lori, that's exciting. Congratulations. It gets uncomfortable when you don't really know, but this is where you have to like trust yourself, trust that the universe has your back, trust your choice. And you just have to choose. Um, I know the day that I quit my job, I, I was giving up that, that comfortable salary. What I create now for money is literally um, this month, it was probably five times what I made as my salary 10 years ago. Yeah, I actually never did that math until right now. I'm like, wow, that's freaking amazing. And it's actually pretty regularly four times. Um, But I had some classes, bigger classes this month. So it generated a little more money. But when you are literally working at your job, like when you have your just your salary, for me, I had my paycheck and that was my paycheck. No matter how many hours I worked, that's what I got. And that was it. And I, I would work, you know, harder on my days off to create more money, but there wasn't enough time literally in my day to, to have more and create more. So me choosing to leave that comfort opened up a space for greater. Now it took me a few years to get there. Um, but I did it and I had my back and I kept choosing. That's the thing. You have to keep choosing. I don't just teach riding lessons or do horse training now. I still do that, but I also facilitate access classes. I also work at the Paradise Hill Ranch in Western Wear. I also do the farm bookkeeping. I also do um, work for Crystal Crawford and other facilitators. You know, I have multiple different income streams, 
But I wouldn't be able to have that if I still had to be at my job like eight to five, right? And so it's just looking at making a different choice. Anyway, with regards to the homeschooling, um, so I'm like, okay, kids don't want to wear a mask. They don't want to go. I agree with them. And so we're not going. Simple as that. It's a choice. Now, what I started discovering yesterday about the homeschool program, which I'd never looked at before, (laughs) but now, okay, we're going, let's do this. Um, The program that I'm looking at, a friend of mine showed me, and it's actually really cool. Um, And it's really brilliant in how it's set up. And the kids, like, we actually have way more freedom. We can actually go to the cabin during the week if we want to go there ice fishing or whatever. We don't have to wait for a weekend. We don't have to try to rush off Friday night and get home Sunday night for school on Monday. We could actually go Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, even if they did a couple days of school at the cabin, that's okay. Or they can just catch up when they get home. Because the, the gal, my friend was telling me like how the curriculum set up, you work at your own pace. And her daughter, I mean, she's fast and she gets her work done and she knows it. And I'm like, I think we could do that too. I mean, in the beginning, it's going to be a little slower, but it'll get there. And she said, there's lots of other families that also don't even start the homeschool program until after harvest is done, which is probably something that we would look at. Um, so cool. Like the freedom, it just feels way lighter now. Like I'm, I'm just really at peace and excited about this new choice. Um, And I also have, you know, very supportive parents in that if when I'm working on Fridays, if the kids aren't in school, they can be at my mom and dad's, which I'm so grateful for. Thank you for that. Or, you know, if I'm going to teach writing lessons in Lloyd for the day, if they're not at school, I do know they have a place to go. And and they're also old enough to be around the farm with Travis as well, doing stuff with him. And so, yeah. So once I made that choice... Then I started to become aware of the possibilities that are now opening up for us. One other really interesting thing that Travis and I talked about before is like traveling across Canada, actually. I have no idea when we will do this, but this is something we've talked about because neither of us have ever been to the West. No, we've been to the West Coast a little bit, not to the East Coast. And we would like to drive like across Canada to the East Coast. And... um, And one of the times a year that we talked that would be really cool to do it is, uh, oh my God, Joy, that would be amazing. I would love that. I love, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to, you know what? And there's actually getting to be a few more homeschool kids around here. That would be so fun. Okay, I'm keeping you in mind, lady. And I have a place you can stay when you come. Anyway, we were talking about going across Canada before. Like, we've we've been having that conversation for, like, a few years now. We'll just randomly mention it. And I was always hung up. Well, it's going to take us, like, a month. For sure, three weeks if we want to, like, really adventure and discover things. And I'm like, we can't actually do that when they're in school because that's a lot of school to pull them out of. But when you're homeschooling, you totally can. And the way that, again, like, with my business being set up and Travis... We can take that time. We can discover that. It's so exciting. I was like, my God, I didn't realize actually how much I was allowing the the school days to structure what we do until yesterday when I started looking at like the freedom we have now. And with me, I've been I'm facilitating these classes and I'm do I do a little bit of traveling and what would it take for that to increase? And so if like Helena often likes to come with me and so she can now because she's we can just do school on the road or whatever we do you know like what else is actually possible um and that's the thing when you know a choice that's true for you yes Lori you're I'm starting at the bottom of the ladder, but I have flexibility. Yes, exactly. Totally. And there's always just a starting point for somewhere. That was the thing, you know, there was, we had, there was a quite a large group of parents that were not happy with what was going on. Um, And I could sense throughout the day, Wednesday before Thursday came, I could start to sense that they were feeling defeated, 
that they were they were feeling defeated. They were like, you know what, my choice doesn't matter. I'm just not gonna, I'm just gonna go with the flow, basically. And, um, and the way that I looked at it was like, there's a destination. This, there's a destination right here, this destination. I don't know what that destination is. Um, whatever, but that's where I'm going. I want to go, I want to leave this town and I want to go to this destination. And so what that requires is a step. Whether it's a big step or a little step, it doesn't matter. It's a step. And so are you willing to make a step? And if you didn't judge that step as a little, you're getting somewhere. You know, you're choosing along the way and you're going to take another step and you're going to take another step. But if you don't ever step, you're going to stay in the same spot. You're going to stay in the same spot and, um, and you're going to be stuck and you're not, and, and often like when I was stuck, when I was feeling stuck pre, pre access classes, pre me learning, I have a choice. I was not happy, not happy at all. Nothing in my life worked for me. I felt very frustrated, irritated. Um, I felt like I was a victim to everything around me. I felt like things always happened to me. That's what I felt like when I was stuck. When, when, when I didn't know that I had another choice. Um, but you do, and you might not see it yet, but if you're watching this video, what possibility is available to you? What other choice do you have? Now, again, every single person has something different that works for them. The choices that I make work for me. I'm, I'm hoping you're making the choices that are working for you. They're going to be different. You know, that's another thing that we try to do is we try to look at somebody else and we try to copy them or be like them, but that's not actually you. That's not actually you. And what is true for you is different than what is true for me. And, um, and, and you have to be willing to be judged for your choice, you know, um, You have to be willing to be judged. Look at her. She's pulling her kids out of school. People are going to make up reasons and justifications as to why I'm doing that. Maybe I I never used to think that people would, would do that or, or judge other people because I don't do that, but that's not true. They do. (laughs) They just do. That's just how some people are. They're really so dedicated to trying to be right and never being wrong and believing, you know, and trying to like, and it just, it just is that. And that's just how some people are. So you have to be willing to be a judgeable offense. I had to be willing for my husband to judge me as being stupid when I quit my job. And, um, and I had to have my own back and know that I could make money teaching riding lessons and training horses. And that created a lot of freedom for me. And I have to be willing for some parents to think that I'm stupid and being ridiculous and don't know what I'm doing because I'm not sending my kids to school and we're doing homeschool. But at the end of the day, this freedom it opens up is freaking amazing, actually. When you make a choice that is true for you, there's like this peace that comes over you, like the peace of possibility. And, and it's so freeing. Like I, it's actually, that is addicting. (laughs) If I'm addicted to anything, it's possibilities and that space. And, um, yeah. So that I know, Lori, I saw that you're creating rings and bracelets. Yes. What else is possible? Exactly. That's so amazing. Um, so yeah. Choose what's true for you. And when you don't, like, oh yeah, that's another thing I want to talk about. How do you know what to choose? Well, in the Access Bars class, getting your bars ran is actually really, really gives you more clarity about what's true for you. And you start to let go of all the energy that's around you, that everybody, that all the stuff that other people have going on, that's not actually yours because you're aware, you're aware of other people and, and what, you're aware of other people and you're aware of other people's feelings and emotions and realities. 
Now, the only way that I have personally been able to let go of that is getting my bars read. Um, so there's that. And um, I have another bars class coming up on October 2nd, which I haven't talked about yet, but there I just did. Um, and another thing you also learn is to ask a question, like start to tap into the energy of what your choice creates. Truth. What will my life be like? And I know, Laura, your next plan is bars, October 2nd. And the weather's going to be nice, so we'll be outside with the horses. That's my ask. Okay, and then the next question is, truth. Um, what will my life be like in five years if I choose this? So truth, what will my life be like in five years if I send my kids to school? And that just felt really heavy for me. That's, that's the energy. That's how I kind of could sense what that, what that would create. Yes, to bars with horses. Good morning, Robert. That's how I could sense what that choice would create. Truth, what will my life be like in five years if I send my kids to school? Yeah. It's kind of just feels really heavy, like a pit in my stomach. Truth, what will my life be like in five years if I don't send my kids to school? And that was really light. Now, notice how I just said don't send my kids to school. I didn't say homeschool because that could be another, like that's a bit of a conclusion. I'm just kind of use the yes or no kind of questions. And so that's something you can start to play with. Um... And start getting a sense of the energy because every single choice you make creates your future. It creates your life. And whether you can recognize it in the time or not, you have a choice. And there are people like me and other people out there who can help you discover what that true, that choice is for you. And then it's up to you to choose it. You know, you've got to do the heavy lifting in the beginning, which is strengthening your muscle of choice. For me in the beginning, my muscle of choice was really weak. And um, yeah, so strengthen it. Then it'll get easier. Right now, it's way easier for me to make a choice than it was five years ago. (laughs) All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me and watching this video. If you would like to, if you got anything out of it, if you think it's, you know, something to share. I would be grateful. And um, yes, Bars with Horses, Saturday, October 2nd. And then Sunday, October 3rd, if you're traveling and you want to come for two days, Sunday, October 3rd is some body process classes. Um, The first one is an RNA class, starts to allow your body to release everything that is going on in the world right now with regards to COVID. Whether... Yeah, because there's just a lot of judgments, a lot of points of view. And that's when our bodies are living in that environment, it's hard on them. Just allows you to release that. And then there was another one. The afternoon one's really exciting. Um, Initializing, actualizing and exponentializing infinite wealth, infinite possibilities and infinite something else. I forget, but it's really cool. Um, So if you want to check out those classes accessconsciousness.com forward slash Catherine Oster. I'll put that link with this video. And I've got another daily dose coming up. Um, We're starting it on Wednesday or Thursday this coming week. I just haven't had time to put it together yet, but it's going to be about defending, like going beyond defending for and against. And um, that's something like when, when you make a choice that's true for you, You don't have to defend it. You don't have to give reasons and justifications as to why. You're just choosing it. Simple as that. And when you do that, when you are that energy of knowing and trusting yourself and choosing and you're not defending, nobody can even waver you. You are like a rock, a big rock that nobody can push down because you are there with your choice. And they can try to say something and it's like, it just doesn't work for me. I'm choosing this. I'm not defending. I don't have to because I know that this is my choice. So if you would like to strengthen that for yourself, that's the next daily dose that's coming. But yeah, 
All right, you guys, have an amazing Friday. I'm off to work at the store. I'll see you sometime somewhere. I wonder. I can't wait. Bye-bye for now.